muted when you're not speaking. Sorry, please do remain uh, muted when you're not speaking. Um, and then remember to unmute yourself when you finish speaking, please. Um, okay, so go ahead and share. Give me one second. Okay, great. So today's class is uh, what is Judaism and who are the Jews? And uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Martin DiMaggio and I'm one of the leaders of Spinoza Chavura and I'm a student on the leadership course for the Society for Humanistic Judaism. So to begin with, I thought we would start with the question, what is a Jew? And for this, I am going to ask people to j just tell us. I want to just hear, uh, I want to throw it out to everyone. And I just want to hear a word. So I'm going to go around the room and just, I want, ev I want everybody to tell me a word that they think would describe who is a Jew. So unmute yourselves and give you a, a minute to think about it. Someone who belonged to the Jewish people. Okay. Culture. Culture. Yeah. Uh, covenant. Who said that? Uh, sorry, that covenant. was Skip. That was me, yeah. Skip. Covenant, okay. It's Richard, I think it's fundamentally the culture, too. Culture, yeah. Yeah, tradition. Uh huh. I think identity. Identity. I think people. People, yeah. I would say based on what a few other people said, maybe it's related to a person, someone who's connected. Connect, someone who's connected? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people that haven't given us their ideas yet. What about Raphael or Stacy, Rebecca? Um, I sorry if I if you have and I not noticed. Oh yeah, I said culture mm -hmm. earlier. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Stacy or Raphael? Um. Yeah. For me, it's it's a culture. Uh huh. Okay, cool. Um, so there's no right or wrong answer, obviously. Um, but I have religion, people, tradition, civilization, ethnicity, family, tribe, race, nation or nationality. And I'm going to add in here uh, some of the others that people said. Somebody said covenant. Uh, and we had identity. And let me just add that. And we had belonging. And we had connection. Connected connection. And we had tradition. I've got tradition already. So are there any of those labels that we might not agree with? I I do not agree with race. Uh -huh. You're here. Yeah, yeah, I had I had no, some uh, I issues with that too. <laughs> Yeah. 
I can't quite catch what you're saying. Who was that? I think I think somebody was speaking in the background on uh, uh, on Marcos's. Yes. Ah, okay, no problem. <laughs> Um, so I was just saying, is there any of these labels for what a Jew is that we might not agree with? And I think some people said they didn't agree with race. Does that mean do people agree with the idea of nation or nationality? I don't think it's religion either. I don't think it's religion. Okay. So is it not religion for anyone that's Jewish? You know, Sherwin Wine said that before before Judaism was the name of a religion, it was the, it was a culture. Mm -hmm. Well, by the way, the yeah. word culture isn't isn't up there. Culture isn't up there. No, it isn't. That's right. <laughs> yeah, culture. Yeah. I think that people agree with a certain number of these. No one probably agrees with all of them. Race is a very controversial mm. thing. I like ethnicity personally. Mm. But, um, yeah, sure. I think it's only because the word race is very controversial in itself. But yes. otherwise, every, so, you know, we're not all going to agree with everyone, but, but I guess no, no, we no. Cool. find out who, who doesn't agree with a certain one or other. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And depending, depending on how the word tribe is used, that might be a little controversial. Mm -hmm. I think it's a kind of informal thing among among people who are Jewish to say, I'm a member of the tribe and things like that. And it's usually mm -hmm. said in kind of a good natured way, but Yeah. So for the early for, for the earliest Jews who um for them they were definitely part of the tribe of Judah. So the the Hebrew word for for Jew is Yehudi, which means a member of the tribe of Judah. So there certainly there certainly was a time in our in our history that we were a tribe. And the Israelite tribe before that. Um, covenant, do you want to say something about what you mean by that? Yeah, that, that was me. Um, here, I'll start my video. Um, basically, um, it's, I mean, it, in the sense that, you know, most of the, well, not most, but uh, many in the, um, you know, Jewish uh, community, Jewish people use it. It's um, a covenant with God. Um, and, you know, talking about the covenants that were made with Abraham and with Isaac and, you know, Moses, um, et cetera. Um, uh, uh, anyway, uh, but I think also it can be used um, kind of in a way similar to how a lot of um, Unitarian Universalists use it, which is making commitments and promises to one another within a community um, to um, uphold certain values and to, to, to like live those values through action. Um, yeah. And when I think, when I think about the word covenant in response to humanistic Judaism, I think about the, that, you know, um, say what, say what you believe and believe what you say. Yeah. Yeah, very good. I mean, these are all really good answers, and there are no completely right or wrong answers involved in that, yeah. actually. Yeah, um, along with race, I'm thinking, uh, Martin, I don't really agree with nationality either. I, agree. I mean, not, not, not all Jewish people are Israelis. I mean, you can be uh, yeah. from Jews can be nationals of the United States, Canada, whatever country they live in. That would be their their nationality. So I'm not so sure I'm comfortable with nation nationality either. Right. Yeah. So I think I think ethnicity. So, um, there could be different um, ethnicities within the Jewish people. Like if someone's Ethiopian, or they're from Morocco, there are different a lot of different cultures and ethnicities within the Jewish people. Yeah. yeah exactly. So let's just take a, a deeper look into some of these uh, terms here. Uh, religion. <clears throat> So, does anybody know who these people are? Yes. You want to tell us? I know. Well, you got Freud up there, I'm pretty sure, and you got Einstein. Mm -hmm. A somewhat younger Sigmund Freud. Yes. Is that Daniel David Badil? David Badil. Yeah, David Badil. 
and what might all of these people have in common apart from being You're Jewish, Jewish. <laughs> what else would they have in common they probably They're secular intellectuals they're all intellectuals yeah um none that none of them identify with judaism as a religion they're all atheists right yeah and yet they're all jewish as well and very much so and they were very they're all very um uh, open they were or are all very open about that so uh david Badil recently wrote the book um uh jews don't count uh, which is about how uh, members, some members of the left uh, seem to ignore anti-Semitism. He's also, uh, he doesn't identify whatsoever with Israel, the state of Israel. Um, he's really fed up with people bringing it up and conversating with him whenever he says he's Jewish. Uh, he talks a lot about anti-Semitism and he's very openly atheist. So, so for them, Judaism is not a religion, right? So uh, for Jews, uh, generally, even for religious Jews, Judaism is a uh, ritual practice. And even in halakha, which is Jewish law, according to Orthodox Judaism, ritual practice is more important than belief. So if you break Jewish law, it also does not make you lose Jewish status. So somebody eating a ham sandwich doesn't, uh, that doesn't stop them being Jewish. However, the practice of Judaism is mandatory, but not belief. Was there anybody here for whom that might be a surprise? Any element of that? Um, when we think of religion, for me. no, no surprise for me. But... No, no. Is there anybody that thought that perhaps for Orthodox Jews? belief was more important than ritual practice? Well, for Orthodox Jews, I don't know. But <laughs> I mean, just in general, I was kind of surprised by that. Yeah. Yeah. So there isn't actually a requirement in Jewish law to have a belief. It's the practice that is required by law. Yes, it does not um, mean that you're not Jewish if you break, if you break that. So straight away, does anybody know what that's called when when you have to practice correctly, not necessarily believe correctly? Orthopraxy. Orthopraxy, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for quote unquote religious Jews, Judaism is an orthopraxy, not an orthodoxy, which is an oxymoron because they're called orthodox, which means correct belief. So yeah. And then uh, what Judaism? So within Judaism, you have Karaite, Rabbinic, Humanistic, Liberal, Reform, Haredi, Orthodox, Masorti, Neolog, Modern Orthodox, Kabbalah, Reconstructionism. And have I missed any? I don't know if renewal is considered renewal. to be a denomination. Yeah, it, I think it is. Conservative. It is. Ethiopian. Yes, exactly. Do you know what Ethiopian Judaism is called? Hymenotic, I think. Hymenot, yeah. Hymenot, exactly. Any others? Conservative, we said. Conservative and Masorti are roughly the same thing. Um, renewal. Uh, yeah, I haven't written that, have I? Yeah, renewal. What's the difference between conservative and Masorti? I thought they were identical. Well, I think in the UK they're identical. I don't know that um, if the American movement calls itself uh, Masorti. Are the um, Sephardic Jews or no. Mizrahi have a different practice? Is that considered? I don't know if that's considered a denomination or not. No, it's not. No. Okay. Well, there are there are denominations within Sephardism, but they're considered part of Orthodoxy. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, in America, have the open Orthodoxy, right? Open Orthodox. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, I think that's similar to modern orthodox, but in the UK we call it modern orthodox. Hmm. I think we could have a whole discussion on whether a minhag is a denomination or not. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there's also um, non-denominational Judaism. So what what might that tell us there straight away when we're trying if if we do if we were to find Judaism as a religion, what what would a Masorti person have uh, in common with a Karaite? The Torah. The Torah, yeah. What do they not have in common? The Talmud, the Mishnah. Talmud, exactly. So a lot of people think that Talmud, the Talmud is a fundamental part of Judaism, right? Lighting the candles, mm. uh, blowing the shofar on Yom Kippur on, and on Rosh Hashanah. Karaites don't do that. Neither mm. do Ethiopian. But yet we think of those as very fundamentally uh, Jewish things to do, right? Is there any is there anything else that uh, might distinguish any of these groups that we can think of? You know, Martin, looking at all of these, I remember a conversation I had with a conservative rabbi years ago when my wife and I were taking a course in Judaism. And we were talking about Judaism as, in some fundamental ways, a debating society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Yeah, well, the expression, you know, there's two Jews and three separate opinions. I mean, it depends who you ask. Yeah. So, is there and anything the third, in there? The third, yeah, yeah, and a third synagogue that nobody would go to. Yeah, exactly. But is there anything in there that we can see straight away that they might have almost everything different? They might not have anything, almost anything in common other than the Torah. May I ask what's neolog Judaism? Neolog Judaism is a form, a, a type of reform from uh -huh. Hungary. Oh. So you. the largest, the largest synagogue in Europe is a neolog synagogue in Budapest. Yeah. So is there anything there that might clash? What might a, a Kabbalist have in common with a Karaite? Anybody want to guess? That they call themselves Jews. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they call themselves Jews. And they both believe in the Torah. But would it surprise you to learn that for a, a Kabbalist, Elohim or Elohim was created by the head, by the, by the source of everything. Elohim was created by the source so they would read even the first line of of the uh of the torah bereshit bara elohim they would read that as reshit that the source of everything created elohim and for a karaite there's no such there's, there's nothing above god god created everything in the beginning so even at the very most fundamental opening line of the torah there would be a, there would be a huge difference there so straight away, uh, what does that tell us about the label religion when referring to Judaism? For those yeah, for whom, yeah, for those for whom it is a religion, what does this tell us about the label religion? Can be understood and practiced in different ways. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? It's not just, oh, it's not just one religion. Right. Yeah. So is there a Judaism or is there more than one Judaism? There is more than one Judaism. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Martin. So, um, yes. Um, does nobody consider Samaritans to be Jews? No, nobody. Okay. 
And that, that's that, an important point. That they are Hebrews, but they're not Jews. They are Hebrews and they are Israelites, but they are not Jews. Thank you. Also, Messianic, alleged Messianic Jews, because they are really Christians, are not considered Jews by just about every Jewish right. group other than themselves. Um, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. But then, but then who considers humanistic Jews to be Jews other than humanistic Jews? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great point. It's a, the question, yeah, I guess. Literary you, slope, isn't it? Didn't yeah. uh, so, I just want to say about the uh, Israelites and the fact that Samaritans are Israelites and Hebrews, not Jews. Um, does any does anyone know why that's the case? Well, I I thought maybe it's because they're descended from Joseph rather than Judah, but then Levites aren't descended from Judah, but they're considered Jewish. Exactly. Well, that goes back to the tribe. Yeah, uh, the the yeah. Levite, no, the uh, the Levites were like sent out and blended with all of the tribes, but they were primarily absorbed by Judah. Oh, of indeed. course, exactly, indeed. So when we went back and we and tribe was one of the labels that we described as who is a Jew. Maybe we might want to revise that and say, okay, maybe the tribe does play a role, right? So we move on to culture now. <clears throat> what do these people, other than being Jewish, have in common with each other? For example, can somebody tell me what's going on on the picture on the left? The rituals in common. What's going on in the picture on the left? The wedding. Yeah. Breaking a glass. Breaking, breaking, breaking a glass. What? Why are they breaking a glass? Well, depending on who you ask, because of the destruction of the temple, perhaps, or or because superstitiously it it means good luck in a reverse kind of way, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And 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 what why would they be doing that specifically? Well, it's it's a common ritual, but I had a reformed wedding. Rabbi wouldn't allow it. On the other hand, he wouldn't because he said it was um uh superstition, but he wouldn't allow me also to use a wedding ring that had holes in it. Right. And can anybody can anybody tell me is that cultural or religious what they're doing in the left? It's a custom. Yeah, tradition. Yeah, well, it's cultural. Yeah, it's cultural, yeah. not religious, right? And can anybody else that maybe hasn't said anything yet tell me what's going on in the bottom right? Is it burning chametz? Nope. Is it a funeral? Nope. Hmm. Is it also a wedding, since that seems to be a theme? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. It's a hilula. Does anybody know what a hilula is? Like, oh, like uh, 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 Baba Sali from Mizraim. Exactly. Mizraim. Exactly, it's Baba Sali. Yeah. It's Baba Sali's Hilula. Does, does, do people know what that is? I didn't no, know what no. Kaddish was, so there's no chance no. I'm going to know what this <laughs> is. <laughs> exactly. So, a Hilula is on the anniversary of a holy man's um, uh, death on his yacht site, let's say. Um, Moroccan Jews will go to um, the tomb of that person and they will burn, they will make a bonfire to, into which they throw uh, either boiled eggs or candles and they make a wish and they believe that the person's light hovers around their tomb. So is that religious or cultural? And I want us to think about Jewish culture, so the, remember that the point of this is Jewish culture. So 
Do we think that that's a universal Jewish culture thing? No. 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 Not a no. universal. Yeah. No. So, Not so universal. I don't know. It, it must be like. A... Sorry, can we, let's just try to take turns a little bit. Um, uh, I, I was just going to say I don't I don't know if there's a word for it instead, um, but it, it's it, it's not if I understand how the word is used it's not halakhic, but it's no. um, it's cultural and 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 so it's not part of the law but it's um, but it's something that they've adopted. Right, exactly. And what's going on in the top right? That's a wedding as well, isn't it? It is, but what exactly yeah. is happening? Oh, They're standing know. under the chuppah. The chuppah, yeah, exactly. They're standing under the chuppah. And do we think that that is a universal Jewish cultural tradition or religious tradition? I wouldn't say anything's universal, but it's very common. It's very common, yeah. Right. That. What type of chuppah is it? That talis. Means, talis. Talis, yeah. talis, yeah, exactly. So talis. Not everybody uses a talis for a chuppah. And is it indoors or outdoors? Indoors? It's indoors, which is not universal because Jewish weddings are quote unquote supposed to take place outdoors, according to Orthodox Jews. <laughs> and so, uh, for and for example, the the tzitzit of the talit, for example, the yeah. karait use the blue and white tzitzit. Blue, exactly. Yeah, and they do not use a um, a chuppah. They put the talit over the couple, so they both put it over themselves. Yeah, and it's indoors for karait. So basically, what we are seeing in these three pictures are things that for different groups of Jews are fundamentally Jewish. They are fundamental parts of Jewish culture for each of the groups. They, nobody in any of those pictures um, would dream of uh, having a Judaism that doesn't look like what they're doing. When they get married, that, they would, that is what they would do. Um, you know, you would hold a chuppah over you and it would be indoors. And then for the others, it would be, you would step on the glass and that's fundamentally Jewish, a uh, Jewish cultural thing. And um, for Moroccans, the Hilula is fundamentally Jewish. So that immediately tells us that I want to go back to this. What should this say? Rather than culture. Cultures. Cultures. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> okay. So it might surprise people or may not surprise people to know that 30% of 32% of American Jews under 45 identify with Judaism, Judaism as a culture, not as a religion. One in five Israelis do not believe in God. And so that leads us to say, is there a common cultural bond between Jews? If you are an American Jewish person who may be Ashkenazi, and you go on a plane and go to Marrakesh, hop off the bus uh, from the airport, and your Jewish guy takes you to Helula, would you feel that you have a cultural common bond with them? No. I, I, I answer that uh, perhaps the, the main culture or, or the, 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 the common culture between all is the biblical history and uh, the Torah as reference, but the uh, after that, each each ethnicity, each culture, its tradition have uh, its uh, self development. Right. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Skip. Skip, your hand is up. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Um, I would say that the thing that's common culturally is that. There's at least some portion of them that doesn't really identify with Judaism or God. <laughs> and and yeah. so that's kind of what unites them. 
Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm glad okay, somebody. Cool. Hi, it's Richard. I, I'm, I'm glad somebody else mentioned historical memory. Yeah. Yeah. So nation, how might we be a nation? I and I want us to break up. Um, not break up, but it's like I'm ending our relationship. Um, can we go into uh, breakout rooms for? for five minutes sure. and discuss why might we be a nation. Hmm, I don't know why they're not cool. There you are. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, all right, great. <clears throat> Right, hello everyone. Did everyone get the message about the definition of a nation? Mm -mm. Okay, so a nation is a large body of people united by common descent, history, culture, or language inhabiting a particular country or territory. So does that resonate with what anyone was saying or does that go against what people were saying in their room? Can I have one person from each breakout room just to summarize what you said? Um, I'm not summarizing. I'm just asking, does that definition say that you have to occupy the same territory? I didn't originally read it that way. No, you don't have to, no. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Can I get some summary? Uh, Rebecca, what, which room were you in? She was in our room. Okay. That she actually Sorry, <laughs> was it like room three? I think. Yeah, yeah. Right? Did you um, summarize what you were doing there? Can I summarize it? Um, uh, we kind of talked about how there were different identities, how we personally um felt about it, um, and I had to step out for a bit, so I didn't catch every single thing. Okay. Is somebody else in your group? Skip, did you say you were in the same group? Yeah, I I, I was speaking up because Rebecca had let us know that she was that she had to step away. Uh, but, okay. um, <laughs> we we had we had Casey and, and Richard and Heather in there as well, um, in case they want to um, add anything else. But we I mean we talked about the the modern literal definition of nation, which you know is one that you've included um, mm. in the chat there. Um, but um, one thing that I talked about is um, uh, the idea of, uh, of nations being united under common purposes and with common goals, um, and particularly with pass passing on cultural memories across generations. Um, and um, uh, one thing that I mentioned is, is that I was listening to a biblical scholar talk about recently how the term nation, um, as it's used in the Bible, particularly in in the um, the Torah, it, uh, uh, it it's actually not nation like we think about. It. It's more like tribe or or you yeah. know a common group of people. And so I thought about it kind of like in that sense. And we talked about you know how how humanistic Judaism um, you know kind of offers a nation or tribe that's um, broad in definition versus other Judaisms which are more narrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And the other group? Another group? Uh, Marcos, which group were you in? Uh, in our group, we uh, we talk about the, the concept of nation. Um, we have different opinions here, but in general, um, we, make, we all agree with the distinction between nation, as we understand in Jewish culture, and nation has the concept uh, from 19th century, the nation states uh, as a country with uh, borders, very definite borders. Uh, and uh, we agree that the, the, when in Jewish uh, context, when we spoke about nation, we speak about the, that old concept of nation as very near with ethnicity. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, yeah. and not the same way as we understand now, has a state nation. And yeah, exactly. uh, 
some of people of our group talk about that that belong to another kind of nations. For example, uh, with the example of the 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 indigenous people from America or indigenous people from Brazil, they mm-hmm. uh, they see him, they themselves as a nation too. In this mm-hmm. old concept of nation, as an ethnicity. Right. Yeah. 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 And Simon, were you you were in a different group from Marcos, and yeah, do you want to summarize what was said in your group? Um, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think yeah, we had a bit of a discussion on similar things to what Marcos's group had about nation, nation states, and probably a key point of our discussion was the idea, well, the importance of a territory, um, which I know in that definition there says they inhabit a particular country or territory. Um, which we discussed, and for me personally, I'm not so sure how important that might be today, um, especially as we think about things like nation states. Sure, yeah. Val, were you in uh, someone's group? I wasn't, but I just, if it was okay to remark about um, yeah. what Marcos was talking about in, in Indigenous nations, mm-hmm. we are, uh, not all of us, but a, a lot of our smaller nations are actual recognized sovereign nations. So we are nations within right. a nation. We have our own government systems and courts. And so we aren't just a group of folks. We actually are recognized as uh, right. sovereign nations. And that is a really good segue, actually. So thank you very much, <laughs> Um Because that is going to lead me to this. Um, so, OK. Um, Nation is often negatively associated or for some positively associated with nationalism. It carries a lot of ideological baggage. It very often pe- very often people think of nations as linked to territory. And that's very much the idea from which Zionism emerged. Although Zionism emerged as a reaction to anti-Semitism. But I want us therefore to look at other alternatives to what nations have meant in Jewish history, in re- fairly recent Jewish history. So um, can I have somebody please read uh, the definition of Sephardism? I can. Um, sorry, I have a cold, so I might sound a little oh, off. No. Um, Jewish nationality in Yugoslavia, Salonika, never heard of that. Mm. Um, Yugoslav Narodnast, also Muslim by nationality. Avram ben, ben Arroya, Bulgarian Social Democratic Workers Party, 1918 Sephardic Circle of Socialist Studies, envisioned a state free from ethnic divisions, survived Nazi concentration camps. Thank you. They're, they're mainly they're mainly points there that I've uh, that yeah. I've um, put there. But yeah, basically, uh, a narodnost in Yugoslavia was mm. a nationality within a nation state. So much like what Val just said about how some indigenous nations are sovereign uh, groups within another nation state, um, there are also narodnost. So one example is what we now think of as people who are Bosniaks, so Bosnian Muslims no matter if they're from Bosnia or not, if they're from the ex-Yugoslavia, they are called Muslim by, they were called Muslim by nationality. So within Yugoslavia, you could have different groups that were nationalities. So this word nationality is limited in English by what we tend to think of as a nationality within Western uh, nations. Um, But actually for Sephardim, from uh, ex-Yugoslavia and coming out of the Ottoman Empire, um, they very much there, there was very much a movement for making Jews a narodnos, a nationality. So before when we said nationality, is that a definition of Jews? And some people said they don't agree with that. Um, this was very important for Sephardim in the ex-Yugoslavia to imagine themselves as a nationality within a federation within which uh, it was free from ethnic division. And they were socialist and democratic. And Avram Ben Arroya was one of, he was a Bulgarian and uh, Bulgarian Sephardi. And 
the only reason that that movement didn't survive was because most of the people that espoused it um, perished in the concentration camps because of the Axis occupation. So straight away we see there, there was a a way to imagine being Jewish as a, na as a nation within a larger nation state. And beyond that, uh, can somebody else read about Bundism? I'm going to put it in the middle one second. Yeah. <clears throat> I can read. Yeah. Bundism, 1897 to 1920. Autonomy without a state inside the Russian Empire. Secular Jewish Socialist Movement dissolved 1921 and incorporated into the Communist Party. Strongly opposed Zionism. Did not advocate separatism. Promoted the use of Yiddish, not Hebrew, as the Jewish national language, Yiddishism. Doikait hereness opposed to the thereness of Zionism. Thank you. So the Bundists um, really were, they were, that was a reaction to anti Semitism and again, and um, was a way for Jews in the Soviet, uh, in the, sorry, not the Soviet, in the Russian Empire to imagine having the rights that other people, other nations, within the Soviet Union had. So they so they said, we need a language, uh, we need autonomy, we have common culture, we have common history, we have common values. And so they fitted all of the um, markers of a nation. And does anybody know about the other Jewish state that, that still exists, that was born out of this movement? In Siberia, uh, I think. In Siberia. Siberia. Uh, exactly, exactly. But uh, I, and, I believe. Sorry. Yeah, and what is the uh, what is the official language of Birovitsa? Russian, I think. And presumably Yiddish or Hebrew. It is Yiddish. I can see Aaron saying Yiddish, but it's on mute. <laughs> so yes, exactly, it's Yiddish. So if you wanted to, you could go to Siberia in the east of Siberia on the border of China, and you could go to a Jewish state called Birobijan, where you'll see Yiddish and all the official signs. There's about uh, 20 Jews living there, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was born of this kind of movement. So again, there was this idea that you could have a Jewish nation, that Jews were a nation, and and we should participate in the Democrat, so uh, emerging demo democratic processes of the countries that we live in. So these were alternatives to Zionism, and where it was fundamental that Jews were uh, imagined as a nation. And um, moving on from that, I then want to go to the idea of us as a race. Now, uh, before I um, before I say before I show the um, the slide, I want to put the UK's definition of race. <clears throat> so can somebody see the chat and please um, read this for us? Sure, I can read, uh, unless Richard wants to because his hand was raised. Oh, sure. I'll, yeah, I'll take a crack. Uh, race Which, whichever. Go ahead, Rebecca. Okay. Um, so the Race Relations Act of 1976 says racial group, quote, means a group of persons defined by reference to color, race, <laughs> nationality or ethnic or national origins and references to a person's racial group refer to any racial group in which uh, he, she or they falls. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Thank you. So race. Are Jews a race? <laughs> can somebody tell me what the people in this uh, picture have in common? They're, they're Jewish. All Jewish. They're, Jewish. They're, all, they're all Jewish, yeah. Are they white? They're African American. Or, or if they're American, they're African American. <laughs> uh, what well, I Jewish. would argue. Jewish Jewish are Adam, you would argue what, sorry? Um, I, I don't think it's a binary question, at least 
the men certainly appear to have African and European ancestry. I, I don't see it as a binary, uh, yeah. a binary question. No, but are they white? I would I would argue that the if I had I, I think it's a bad question, but if you force me to to give you an answer, I would say I would say they were all white and black. Okay. I would say that the man on the left I've, probably to me looks more European than he does African. Mm -hmm. I think that's a matter. I think that's a matter of lighting. Um, I think that <laughs> all of the uh, all of the individuals in this in this um, slide would identify as black. Yes. Yes. Right. I I I think that uh, perhaps in the beginning of the history of the Jewish people, we can talk about race, but uh, nowadays uh, I think it's not 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 make more sense. So at the beginning, we have a very regional and very delimited people, mm -hmm. but after that, uh, after the the beginning of the that the. And the, after the destruction of the temple, uh, I think it, it's not more uh, it's not more right. possible to to put this concept the uh, uh, right level right. Thank you, but I just want us to be very basic right now and just look at this picture and say, okay, thank thank you, everyone. Those that said everyone in this picture is Jewish, that is absolutely correct. And from from a very basic response, are they all white? The answer is no. They are, they are not. Um, and then I want to look at this picture and tell me what everybody in this picture has in common. They they're Jewish. Married, they all married somebody Jewish. And they're all Jewish. And they're all Jewish. Yeah, exactly. And are they white? Yes. They by are. Con by construct, yes. That's yeah, nice right. Ask. <laughs> exactly. So, um, it might surprise people to know that I don't know about in, in the United States, but in the UK, Jews are defined as a racial group, according to the definition of what was just read. So if you are anti, if you make an, if you commit an anti-Semitic hate crime in the UK, if you've, you've committed a, a race hate, that's like race hate in the UK. So straight away, we see that the definition of what we think of as race according to the UK and the United States is different and that the people in the pictures and all suffer the same form of hate crime if they were all living in the UK, which the guy on the left does because he's a famous singer in the UK called Craig David. So uh, I see some hands raised. Do you want to go ahead? Um, the first hand I see is Liz. Um, yes, so uh, earlier I was going to make a comment on um, the the issue of um, race and whiteness uh, in particular. So uh, based on how I understand it, the category of um, whiteness is basically uh, the idea that race is inherently uh hierarchical construct where whiteness is considered the in-group. And so um, I think under this, um, in this concept, the people on this slide, for example, would not be white because um, under the concept of what whiteness as we understand it, it's um, about purity. Okay, thank you. Um, Stacy. Uh, you're second. muted. Yeah. You're muted, Stacy. Um, so what I wanted to say, um, Martin, is what you were talking about the definition of uh race where you're at. And I remember um I don't actually remember, remember, but in history class, I learned that um, in where I grew up in Texas, that there were neighborhoods until the 60s and um, not just neighborhoods, but businesses and and all that, that if you were Jewish, you were not considered white. Right. And even yeah. my own grandmother, yes. um, I mean, I'm adopted, but even my own grandmother in high school was like, well, why do you want to go out with a Jewish boy? 
why can't you go out with a white boy? And it just like shocked me that, you know, people still, still thought that, you know, right. Um, but yeah, e even until, until um, the sixties in Houston, that happened Houston, Texas. And one interesting thing is the neighborhood that the um, wealthy Jewish people lived in, in Houston was because they couldn't live in the wealthy other neighborhood. And when they were finally able to move into the wealthy white neighborhood, they treated um, the African-American and black community the same way that they were treated by the white community years before. So I found that really interesting and sad. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you, Stacey. Thanks. Uh, Richard? Yeah, two things. Uh, back in the 1960s, I'm, I'm sorry, 1950s, the anthropologist Harry Shapiro wrote a book with the title, Are Jews a Race? Um, and also, it was, with, with regard to Russia, if you were Jewish in Russia, you, your internal passport said Jewish. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it was a nation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Can somebody please read the UK definition of race again? Racial group means a group of persons. Oh, I'm sorry, it didn't go down. So, racial group means a group of persons defined by reference to color, race, nationality, or ethnic or national origins. And references to a person's racial group refer to any racial group into which he falls. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So, one of the reasons why I want us to look at that is because race means different things in different parts of the world. And if you lived in 1941 Germany and you were a Jewish person who who had been taken to a concentration camp, you weren't white at all. So um, you were a part of a racial group, absolutely, because your your people that you belong to, according to that definition, were being exterminated. So I and I just want us to remember also that being a Jew doesn't mean looking one way. You can look like this, you can look like this, and you're still Jewish. Um, so I think in the in the world definition of race, it, it's nuanced. It's very nuanced. You, you are, you, there's no one answer, basically. So Surprise, surprise, to those people that might have come wanting specific answers to these kinds of questions. Well, welcome to being Jewish. We don't have one answer to anything. Um, yeah, so race tends to be defined by biology. So it's a social construct, descent from a common ancestor. It, the word race has negative connotations, mainly developed by colonialism, by... Um, eugenics by nazism uh cultural appropriation plays a role in there and this question can you join a race does somebody want to answer that question can you join a race i think the the whole idea is so incoherent that the, the question doesn't all doesn't really make sense i think it can be the society a society can think that you've joined a race for example the edomites would you um would you would judaized Ju judaicized judaized yeah so, judaized sorry um so i mean sort of the society would agree that the edomites have joined the jewish race but i mm -hmm. think the reality is that the they're all social constructs that don't really make any sense if they're mm -hmm. no thoroughly exactly liz uh, well, there have been uh, people that throughout history would not have been considered white that are now considered white. And so mm -hmm. I would say that it is possible to, quote unquote, join a race, but not willingly. Mm -hmm. So, Valia. Yeah. So in the United States, the one drop rule still exists. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. In the United States, yeah. we have a one-drop rule that if you have one drop of any kind of African blood in you, you are considered African. It's it was a way to to classify you even further down. So technically, I would be considered black under that law if they wanted to. And you, can, I don't look anything like a, a, what I would think of as a black person. But 
back in the day, white passing, quote unquote, people were able yeah. to join the white race without anybody knowing. But yeah. their other family members had to stay in the black race because that's what they looked like. So it's yeah. possible, but it's not, you know, it's it's a deceptive way just to protect yourself. And I get right. I get flack because I can pass between my white family and my indigenous family all the time. And depending on which parent I'm standing next to is what a person will see, what race they will see. Uh, yeah, I know. I know that feeling as well. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Richard, yeah, and uh, thank you for the for the points about uh, you know uh, the, how uh, unsteady the concept of racism. South Africa under apartheid tied itself in knots, defining different races. They ended up call, uh, deciding that Japanese would be honorary whites, while Chinese mm -hmm. would be people of color, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's and it really kind of make it, it emphasizes the point that it's all a construct. Right, exactly. Yeah, thank you. So that moves on to the very non-controversial question: Are Jews white? Um, and I think that based on what we've just discussed, we might it might be easy to answer that. So can I have some people very quickly try and answer that question for us? Are Jews white? Some are. It depends. It depends. Some are. Some are. I think it depends. I'll just put a hard no on that one. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it depends on who's asking because we have forms here all the time. You have to choose between, you know, black, white, Hispanic. You know, there's a couple of different choices, but none of them is Jewish. Although sometimes they say other. You know, and, and once in yeah. a while, I'll, I'll check other and I'll say Jewish or something, whatever. But yeah. it's it's just so, you know, for the purposes of the of the survey, of why they're asking you, you're white if you're privileged, if you have that type of privilege that they're asking you about. And so yeah. you say you're white or if you feel like, you know, that that would be the most appropriate. They would think that's the most appropriate answer. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? I um, say no, but uh, uh, this is a problem here in Brazil because uh, 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 Semitic say, uh, someone Semitic say uh, uh, Jewish are, uh, are white capitalists. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 about Israel colonization, anyway. Uh, yeah, so if that person said to any of the people in this picture, oh, your Jews are white, what's their answer? No, obviously no, not. Exactly. Yeah. So the answer to this so the answer to this question is no, Jews are not white because Jews are not one colour. Mm. Right? Yeah. So this a very a very heated debate, I know, especially with some recent comments like from Whoopi Goldberg, etc. Um, but the answer to this question is no, Jews are not white. Why? Because Jews are not one colour. What Jews are not one group. We are many different types of groups. So I could be white and Jewish, but they're not white and Jewish. They are white and Jewish. That tells you a lot. So that's uh move us move us on to civilization. Um so can I have somebody read um um, yeah, can I have some people reading from the screen? Go ahead, Stacey. Do you want me to read uh, one or all of them? Just the first one? Uh, you could read a couple of them. Okay, I'll, I'll start with Kaplan. Kaplan, 1934. Um, he said, civilization characterized by art, culture, ethics, history, language, literature, social organization, symbols, local custom, beliefs, rituals, etc. And then Durkheim said how societies maintain integrity and coherence and modernity. Exactly. Thank you. And then Kaplan defines Jews as, and then can somebody read the next three?
I could read, um, religion, primarily human, naturalistic expressions of culture, uh, land as central to Jewish story, orientation toward the Holy Land, origin, myth, calendar, and holidays, and language, many Jewish languages. Yeah. So those are some of the things that um, for uh, Mordecai Kaplan in 1934 um, defines Jews as a civilization because we have art that we share among Jews. We have culture, uh, cultural uh, elements of culture that are shared between all Jews. We have shared ethics between all Jews. We have shared history. We have shared languages. We don't just have one Jewish language, but we have Jewish languages that are all defined by elements of Hebrew and Aramaic, um, going from Yiddish to Judeo-Arabic to Judeo-Malayalam in, uh, in South India. Um, we have uh, shared literature. I certainly have shared literature. The Talmud, uh, the Zohar, the Torah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have shared symbols that are shared between all Jews, especially Mag and David, the menorah, etc. Uh, we have local customs which are shared by all Jews and other customs that are not shared. We definitely have shared beliefs and we have shared rituals. So according to that definition of civilization, Jews do fit um, that sociological definition. And land is central to to the Jewish uh, story, because regardless of what we think of Zionism, we have always Jews have always had an attachment to the quote unquote Holy Land. Um, whether whether that meant that we wanted to go and live there, or whether it was a symbolic place, or or whatever it was, but we have always been oriented towards a land from which our origin myth uh, states that we came. So all of our original all of the original stories in our origin myth were centered on a land. So by that definition, we we share a land. Uh, our calendar and our holidays all are oriented around that land too. Um, religion, we have shared religion, whether it was primarily human or not, and whether it was naturalistic or, or theistic, but we have a shared religion. And, and I mentioned language. So... By that definition, um, uh, Mordecai Kaplan said that we are a civilization rather than a culture or religion. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that? I'd say they're not mutually exclusive. It, it could be a civilization and a culture. Mm -hmm. In the sense, uh, in the sense of uh, you, uh, you say the of nation, uh, I. I about Israel, land of Israel, the myth of origin. I think the the, the concept of Eretz Israel is different of Israel as a uh, modern country. Uh, I think the, the Eretz Israel is a, a theological concept, more, more likely a theological concept, and the, the state of Israel is a political modern uh, concept. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we covered or any comments? I, sorry, and again, uh, about the topic uh, uh, you say before when you showed the, the, the picture of Freud, I'm actually reading the, the, the last book he wrote, he wrote uh, Moses, the man Moses and the origins of the monotheism. Um, this book is very important to Freud because he tried to understand the origins of the Judaism and the, what what is the essence of the the uh, he, he doesn't use this term but uh, he tried to find what is Jewishness more than yeah. Judaism yeah uh, and uh, and uh, in the preface in the preface of his book Totem and Tabu the Hebrew preface he has to himself 25 years before he say he said, I'm not share the religion of my forefathers. I don't have a nation concept in the, in the Zionism concept. I don't know the language, but still I'm considered a Jew. So yeah. what, 
what to have in in me of Jew if I don't agree with nothing of religion, nothing of uh, uh, language. What and uh, all his life he tried to understand psychologically what is this Jewishness. And yeah. I think in, in humanist uh, Judaism, uh, I think is the movement who develop more this concept of Jewishness more than Judaism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Any other comments uh, or questions that have arisen? May I ask what does Whoopi Goldberg say? Who? Whoop, you mentioned Whoopi Goldberg, and I I didn't understand the reference. Oh, Ooh, that's a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> she said that um, the Holocaust was not racially motivated because it was white on white. Uh, it was a white Ooh. on white. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that's all I need to know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Ma uh, Martin, sorry, I, you um, know, you, you sorry, are one other second. people. Yeah, sorry, one sec, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, one of the things we talked about in our group was a, a, the concept of nationhood is often aspirational. And it's it's the desire to find, to make, to create or find unity uh, within diversity. Um, so I just wanted to add that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great comment. Yeah. Anybody else? What I see learning from Adam. Hello. I I can't tell who's speaking right now. Um, it's, it's Jamie. Oh hi. Hi hi. What I what I've learned by listening is basically everything is in how you define it. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends on your definition. Here 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 here. Exactly. Yeah. L um, Lori, I think I saw your hand. I, yeah. Um. Uh, what what you've brought up with all of this today is that it's complex, that it's not simple to be, the definition is not, it's not simple, it's complex, and it, it's just very multifaceted, and that's kind of fascinating to me. Yes, I'm glad that's what came across. Um, I, I purposely made some challenging and slightly controversial uh, questions or put them across, because also I want people to see that it is so com so complex that there is no one answer to who is a Jew and what and what Judaism is, meaning also that you are valid in what you consider to be your Judaism. So if you consider yourself to be Jewish and you're identifying with the history and the present and the future of of the Jewish people, and you are in this group today, that's because you're Jewish, and there are all these definitions about what being Jewish means. And you fit into that as well. Is that is that clear to people? Is that problematic to anyone? Or? Yeah. Um, in yeah. your <laughs> uh, Martin, in your syllabus, you mentioned the book Judaisms, and I yeah. actually read that book. Uh, I, I right. purchased it and, and read it. And if you read that, you'll you'll really see the full diversity uh, of, of, sure. of of the Jewish people and, and Judaism, and and there isn't there isn't one. There is no, I don't think there's any uniformity at all. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there are said traits, there are said qualities like we discussed. Yeah. Um, Marcus? Uh, in the last days, I'm uh, thinking very deeply about a question that I want to put to you. Uh, it's about this concept of adopting, etc. So, uh, in the humanistic Judaism, we defend the concept of self, the individual self, self determination. You understand uh, when you when we say if I identify as a Jew, so I'm a Jew for a humanistic Judaism. So this the the the, the primordial sense is the individual self self determination. Uh, but in the, I have a struggle in in the cultural world and the cultural studies, a struggle between the the collective self determination and the individual self determination and uh, usually in uh, Judaism traditional Judaism the collective self determination is more important than individual self in, uh, determination so what the collective 
accept has a Jew is more important than each self feel uh, or think about what is a Jew. Um, I think that the individualism, uh, the individualism, is a uh, it's a, a product of um, Occidental and Christian civilization in Europe, um, and uh, the individualism have the is root in the in the Christian theology, uh, and in other cultures like in Eastern cultures, Hinduism or Buddhism or, or or uh, Judaism, uh, they, the, the, the prevalence of collectivity is more strong. So if you see, for example, the old, uh, the, um, old uh, the the old conversions terms of Judaism, orthodox, conservative, etc., they, they have the main point in the collective self-determination. Uh, so this is the conditions of the collectivity, and if you agree with that, so we will achieve. In the humanistic Judaism, we see something different. Is the, the main point is the individualistic self-determination. Uh, and human rights, for example, is based on individual self-determination too, the, the human rights. So yeah. what do you say about that and the, the, the coherence of that? Yeah, so we are part of the Jewish collective. And as a body of, uh, Jewish, um, as a body of Jewish leaders, we as a movement have determined that you can be into our, our collective Jewish movement based on, uh, self determination. So even with the most orthodox of Jews, it's never been the case that the entire Jewish nation would just allow uh individuals in even converts there are sephardic groups that uh, do not allow converts not all sephardim but there are sephardic groups that do not allow i think it's syrian and Iraq, some iraqis do not do not allow converts at all regardless of the fact that other orthodox jews do so straight away you can see there that we are a movement with an alternative to joining the, the jewish collective and i think it's different if you were just had no exposure to Judaism or, or Jewish culture or anything, and you just said, I am a Jew because I, I like it. Well, actually, we are a body of Jews who are saying that we accept you into our movement, into our collective. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I see Skip, Aaron, and Paula. In that order. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so... Uh, I, I, my comment is a very quick one. I just simply wanted to say how good it felt when you said, um, you know, that we're, because we're all here and because we're participating and because we want to, that, that we're Jews. Um, that was like the first affirming thing that I've been told by somebody else in, in relation to this. And um, because I've been really full of self doubt and um, kind of wondering if I've, like been kind of cosplaying, so to speak, um, and and just kind of like appropriating at times. It feels really good to have somebody say something affirming like that. Thank you. Yeah. So you're part of Jewish culture because you've you become part of our movement. You're part of our group, and you can't cosplay your own culture. It's part of your culture too. Yeah. Um, Aaron. Yeah, I was going to say regarding uh, adoption or conversion that it really, I, in my opinion, goes back to this idea that we have are an orthopraxy and not uh, orthodoxy. That, you know, the reason when most people go to convert in most denominations that you have to take a year worth of classes and learn is because you have to learn how to practice. Um, and and I think that that's but but beyond that, once you start doing Jewish things and you are surrounded by people who are doing things with you or can or can vouch for the fact that, yes, I see them doing these things. They are Jewish. Um, that in and of itself is a kind of self-determination that you decide to, uh, I don't want to say potentially convert, 
with I mean, people say you could vote with your legs. I think you can convert with your legs. You know, you you begin practicing and 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 then doing that, you are you become what you want to become. You know, but, but uh, I I also feel like um, personally, I like I like putting things into writing. <laughs> um, I like yeah. the fact that there is a you know a document that can that that is signed by other people that says yes, indeed, this individual is Jewish. I, I like that. I, I, you know, I, I like the idea of a marriage contract. I like, I like the legalistic uh, stuff. Um, yeah. So I do hope at the end of this, if there anyone is wants a document, you know, I know I'd be happy to sign anything. Uh, and I'm just, you know, yeah. so I, I just want to throw that out there. That's all. We are, we are, we will be doing that. Yeah, we will be doing something like that. Okay. Thank, thank you for your comment. Uh, and then there's Paula. I, I just want to say that in Israel. The very, very heredity do not believe, do not feel that other Jews are Jews, that Reformed Jews are Jews. They, they're the only Jews. That's what they say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I uh, who is this? This is Jamie. Yeah, hi, Jamie. Uh, hi. <laughs> I don't know how to put up my hand on my Zoom on this no, phone. No, no worries. So, <laughs> um, so I went through the, the adoption uh, process with the Society for Humanistic Judaism. And what I did is I basically did uh, enough um, study, uh, reading, rereading. I, I must have went through 10 to 15 books. Uh, also attending uh, um, a lot of the classes by Rabbi Felix, as well as uh, um, there's a wealth, wealth, of um, information on Jewish history by Rabbi Shalom uh, on YouTube. I watched his series. There's about 20 sessions of a, an hour long or so. I watched them twice, but anyway, I did a lot of work until what I did is I, I wanted to make sure that I felt I had done enough to learn yeah. about Jewish history, Jewish culture, Jewish practice, etc. So when I felt that I'd done enough I then approached Rabbi Felix and I said, I've done this. Can I, do you think I, sh I should ask for adoption? He said, yes. And then I went to Rabbi Miriam Jarris um, and then I was able to get the certificate. It was, um, it was important to me. Um, and um, I think that um, one person previously said, uh, doing Jewish things, um, behavior, yes. I mean, am I starting to behave in a Jewish way? In my my answer to myself, myself is yes. Now, is it going to be a growing, lifelong process? Yes. Uh, when I went uh, read um, the Genius of Judaism by uh, the French uh, Jewish uh, um, philosopher, I don't know if he's a philosopher, uh, Levy, and he he mentioned that that was a huge difference between. Uh, Judaism and Christianity. He said it is a process, a lifelong process of study, and it is not a leap of faith. So I have no leap of faith. I hope to see grow uh, as a huge person and within a Jewish framework. So uh, yeah. um, that 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 that's my perspective. And I like the idea of adoption because. Rabbi Shalom, I watched his uh, back on, on on secular humanistic Judaism, and the society has a familial approach of, um, of you adopt a person into your family. Does that mean they get rid of everything that they were before? No. And they're not kind of reborn. No, it's it's a continuation of their, their own journey, and uh, you're yeah, simply exactly. adopted to the family. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, Mazel Tov on your certificate. And um, I, uh, I just want to say that study is one of the practices that I would consider part of the orthopraxy of Judaism. So thanks for bringing that up. And I also personally, I, I believe in, in, in orthopraxy to some extent, but I think that we can own it for ourselves. We can study what those practices mean and we can find ways to, to practice them according to what we, what we believe as humanistic Jews and as individuals and as members of other cultures too, not just as members of the Jewish people. So bring all of our heritage with us and all of that. 
And that's one of the reasons why um, by the time we have reached our sh session on Shabbat, I would want for people to have observed Shabbat in some way, according to what they believe observing Shabbat would be. Because I think that it's important that if you consider yourself to be a member of a, of a group of people, that you know some of the practices through lived experience. And I'm not enforcing any way to do that on anybody. I just think that it's something that we should all be experiencing as Jews. Um, and I see um, Richard and then Skip, and then I think that we have to finish. Very quickly, there's an intriguing parallel between at least one of the themes in our conversation and what democracy is. Democracy is also an argument. It's supposed to be a civilized argument. And democracy is also an attempt to institutionalize some kind of unity when there's when there's diversity. So thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, is it Aaron? Aaron, is your hand still up on purpose? No. Okay. So so Skip's hand was up. Do you still want to say something, Skip? Just very quickly. Um, I sure. I um earlier my AirPods were uh, were in, and I think they died while you were speaking to me. Oh no. Nice after after i spoke up before and so i i wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind repeating um i i think that my some a summary of what i said was that um you cannot cosplay your own culture because you are you cannot culturally appropriate for example a culture that you are now part of you know you you have been you have adopted Judaism and we accept you as Jewish and so you should not worry about cosplaying because it's now part of your identity it's not cosplay does that make sense yeah so now now you are you are authorized to eat gefilte fish <laughs> and chop okay. liver too chop liver too chop liver. If you want. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but by the way because it has nothing to do with my my jewish heritage so there you go um so uh does anybody have any burning anything burning that they want to say or are we okay to finish um yes. is there like a reading a reading we're supposed to be doing um for the next time or anything like that uh, the next session is, uh, I don't have the schedule uh, on my screen. Um, two weeks, I think. The only weeks. one we're skipping is the one right before Christmas. Yeah, it could be Hanukkah, right? Um, I'm sure I've tried to look it up on my phone. It, yeah. It could be about Hanukkah, yeah. I think there is a reading. Um, does anybody here have the schedule? I have it here. Uh, let's see. What's the date? It's a Judaism Unbound podcast episode. Oh, okay, the question. No, about, uh, yeah, Judaism Unbound. There, if you look at the syllabus, I mean, that's all I'm looking, exactly. I'm looking at. The syllabus. There is something you can click on. Judaism Unbound Hanukkah resources. Okay. December tenth, right? I got December tenth. Yeah. yeah. And it's by it's with James, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So listen to that podcast make notes if you want um and yeah thank you everybody i think that was a quite a very interesting session and i hope that um it uh made things clear to people and you were clear in the lack of clarity about what being a jew means <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much martin and thank everybody for a very articulate conversation and democratic yeah thank you everybody thank you good Do night everyone okay good night